rabbit mentality for the miraculous. Yet this, a man will cause a system headache when his head is not in use. A man will cause a system headache when his head is not used. A man will cause a system headache when his head is not used. Every man's stability is tied to his mentality. Every man's stability is tied to his mentality. Every man's stability is tied to his mentality. Every man's ability or disability is tied to his mentality. Every man's ability or disability is tied to his mentality. As every man's ability or disability is tied to his mentality. Until you think right, you cannot talk right. Until you think right, you cannot talk right. Until you think right, you cannot talk right. And until you talk right, you cannot act right. I say until you think right, you cannot talk right. And until you talk right, you cannot act right. And until you act right, you cannot get it right. I go over it. I say until you think right, you cannot talk right. And until you talk right, you cannot act right. And until you act right, you cannot get it right. So getting it right starts from thinking it right. Getting it right starts from thinking it right. It is what your mind can comprehend that your hands can apprehend. It is what your mind can comprehend that your hands can apprehend. It is what your mind can comprehend that your hands can apprehend. Now, this is so powerful in the sense that whatever makes a man grow, God consciously put it in his head. Whatever will make a man grow, physically speaking, biologically speaking, everything that will control a man's life, God positioned it in the man's head. If you check, what makes a man a giant is found here. The pituitary gland is in the mind, in this side, this brain. That's where the pituitary gland is found. That is what determines whether a man will be a dwarf or a giant is found here. And then the entire body is controlled by the central nervous system, which is also found here. So God consciously put whatever we control the man's life from his head here. And then whatever also we control the man's growth here. You can't grow higher than you think. You can't grow higher than you think. You can't think low and go high. And you can't think high and go low. So you can't grow higher than you think. You can't think low and go high. And you can't think high and go low. God will give you understanding in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now many people look for money. They say their problem is money. No. Your problem is not money. Your problem is how to use your mind. The first thing you should do to anybody looking for money is to work on the person's mind. If you give a man money that his mind is not renewed, that money is money soon gone. Every man that will make exploits in this world, you must first take care of your mind first. All the nations of the world in the year 1400, we are at the same level. Then certain people started operating in a realm where they began to renew their minds and then they started experiencing change. Some countries now became first world countries. Other countries became third world countries because they have first world mind and the other ones have third world mind. That's why some presidents beg other presidents money. And all of them are presidents. That's why some presidents shake some other presidents with two hands while all of them are presidents. Please take note. When 
I was looking at something, it shocked me. The biggest currency, the most respected currency in the world today is not dollar. It's Kuwaiti dinner. It's a small country. Very small country. But their money is very expensive. It's higher than the pounds. Pounds is about number four, number five. It's higher than the pounds. Small country, but with sharp mentality. So it's not your smallness. It's the bigness of your mind. If your mind is big, your destiny will be big. If your mind is small, your destiny will be small. I've seen people with big body that are intimidated, and I see small people with small body that are not intimidated. That is the truth. Every man is a product of his thought. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are a direct product of your thought. Where you are now is where your thought has brought you. Where you will be tomorrow is where your thought will take you to. Every man is a direct product of his thought. I pray God will give you understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say I pray God will give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Several years ago, precisely the year 1998, they came to God's servant. See how powerful the mind is. They came to God's servant. That's David Ibiomia. And they said to him, we want you to come to NTA Portacourt and do a program. Then they used to call it prologue and epilogue. When they want to open the television, that time it used to be by 4 o'clock, then you will hear them play the Nigerian national anthem, bang, boom, bang, bang, brrr. then a man of God will come and then share the word, and then the television will start. And then when they want to close at about 11, 12, another man of God will come again and then close the television with prayer. They say, you should come and do it. He said, no, this is not what God told me to do. It was sounding like pride then, but it's not true. He said, this level is too low for me. Then it was not known even on Bilabi Street. See the mind now. Today's Howard of Salvation is on the biggest television, Christian television network in the world. They have only two Nigerians there. Salvation means one other church. I don't know whether the other church is continuing. It's only one Niger I've not seen any African in that place, truth be told. In that television network. I watch them regularly. Now, the man taught it and today he's seeing it. Whatever you are seeing now is what you taught yesterday. This is the problem. People think it's their prayer. Your prayer without thinking right. They said it this morning. What seest thou? What seest thou? What have you seen? Abraham, what have you seen? What seest thou? As far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. That is as far as your mind can handle. I will put it in your hand. Somebody will go places in Jesus' name. I say you will go places in Jesus' name. That's why I'm against every man that allows his wife to feed him. I've seen men come to me for counseling and they cry. I say, sir, why are you crying? They cry. Say, the way my wife is treating me, I don't like it. And I know the moment he says, the way my wife is treating me, I don't like it, I know that he is not the breadwinner. He's the bread collector. It's the bread collector. It was that bad that one of them came to me and said, Sir, my wife slapped me and I maintain. I said, Why would you maintain? Life story, I'm telling you. My wife slapped me, sir, and I maintain. I said, Your wife will slap you, we maintain. Since you are not the one calling the shots, he that pays the piper dictates the tune. If your wife is the one feeding you, the soup will be like winning. It's not a joke, oh. Don't blame them. Women are not designed for that. Please listen to me. Don't blame when women, when people talk, I say women are not designed for that. The man was given his role from the beginning as the home provider. Don't blame the woman is not ready to come and be the home provider. Look, all the men here watch. If you want to be feeding your husband for life, raise up your hand. You do see anybody now? Nobody. Okay, if you want your husband to be feeding you for life, raise up your hand. You see that? Okay. Now, this tells you that no woman is looking for a Malaysia to marry. If you're a lazy man, they don't like you, they will hate you. They will hate you. You see, the way you think it is, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I got this particular thing early in life when I was one day driving with him, and he said to me, very, he struck me. He said to me, never depend on a woman's money. They don't depend on a woman's money. 
A woman can give you today. You will give her, if you give her two billion today, you say, excuse me, give, just give me like um, one million, let me give to somebody. She will say, I borrow you this money. <laughs> After you give me back. They are not willing. Don't blame them. They were not designed to be the carriers of the load. They are only to help you to make the load lighter. Stop putting it on their head. Praise God. I know some men will not be happy. Oh, but you will not grow. Even God will not bless you financially if your wife is feeding you. You don't know. I say, man, God will not bless you financially if your wife is feeding you. Yeah. You will, the, the little money you are bringing is the one you will put on ground. Then you will not tell God that God will say, I'm doing my work. Place your hand on my finances. As you are doing covenant work, and then God will place your hand to override, to overtake the woman. But if they are waiting for her to be feeding you, feeding you, feeding you, you will go nowhere now because she is obeying scripture. She will be richer than you. Because of her words, she is hearing. She will be obeying scripture. She will be richer than you. So this is wisdom. But if you want to hear, you hear. If you don't want to hear, you take it. <laughs> Praise God. What you settle for in your mind is what you will settle with in life. What you settle for in your mind is what you will settle with in life. What you settle for in your mind is what you will settle with in life. Your life is like a house. Your mind draws the design and your actions build the design. I say your life is like a house. Your mind draws the design. And your actions build the design. Hear this. Your mentality is the architect of your life. Your mentality is the architect of your life. Your mentality is the architect of your life. Your words are the structural engineers and builders of your life. And your actions are the finishers and furnishers of your life. I go over it. I say your mentality is the architect of your life. Your words are the structural engineers and builders of your life. And your actions are the finishers and furnishers of your life. Until your mind designs it, your life cannot build it. Until your mind designs it, your life cannot build it. Until your mind designs it, your life cannot build it. A faulty design will lead to a faulty building. And a right design will lead to a right building. A faulty design will lead to a faulty building. And a right design will lead to a right building. Shout hallelujah. You will not have a faulty design and you will not have a faulty building. If you believe it, your amen will show it. Yeah. Hear this, as a believer, to have a mentality of suffering in sickness, disease and lack is satanic oppression. Some Christians believe that suffering is normal. You have not seen some people, they believe that suffering is normal. We must suffer with the Lord. And I tell them, why will you read your Bible with one eye closed? Why, did, why not read it with two eyes open? First Peter chapter 4 verse 1 says, Arm yourself with this mind that Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. So if you have suffered for us in the flesh and we should arm ourselves with this mind, why should we suffer what he has suffered? Doesn't make any sense. A man's to double jeopardy. If Jesus Christ suffered for you and you are still suffering what he suffered, then it doesn't make any sense him paying the price for you. So once you arm yourself with this mind, it becomes a different altogether. Some people believe that sickness is normal, affliction is normal, sorrow is normal, suffering is normal. The Bible says when you have suffered a while, not when you have suffered forever. When you have suffered for a while. It says weeping may endure for a night. Why will your own weeping endure forever? Weeping endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your own money is never coming. Then you have to sit down and tell yourself some truth. Sincerely speaking, somebody like me, I hate poverty with, with weak. That it's with hatred. I hate it with poverty. Because I suffered. I suffered. I started walking on the street of Port at the age of seven. There was nothing I didn't sell except human parts. <laughs> I 
I went to school, secondary school, with my older brother's trouser that they cut to nika and hem with needle and thread. Because there was no money to buy. I was sitting for common entrance, they photocopied my passport. The teacher looked at the passport and said, is it you? I said, it's me. <laughs> One day, I went to school. I will never forget, secondary school. That was the worst day of my life. I went to secondary school, and then they were looking for senior boys. They were looking for who to carry to go and wash toilet that is not clean. Dirty toilet. And then they suddenly were going about looking for who does not have the school color of nika. So they came and stumbled on me. I was part of it. They seized my nika. I was not wearing pants. <laughs> You'll be laughing. Thank God. The only saving grace I had that day was that it was all male school. If not, it would have been a serious disaster. They seized my nika because it was well. It was well. Besides, you enjoy poverty. Anybody that lost poverty is not in his right mind. It's not in his right mind. Poverty is an unclean spirit. <laughs> Do you know that? One day my daughter came back and said she wants to eat uh, uh, spaghetti. She does not want to eat uh, macaroni. She wants to eat spaghetti. I said, give her to eat. Me, I did not see the opportunity to choose food, though. <laughs> give her to eat, give her to eat. My mama will carry Gary Poo for this thing. Give, you take a teeth, buy St. Louis sugar. Uh, half. Give you drink. Drink this, Gary. If you don't drink it, you die. Come on, drink this, Gary. You go talk while you can't enter my stomach. Drink this, Gary. Somebody in the... So listen to me. Somebody in this present world now, you will enjoy... Even when they are trying to bring some people out of poverty, they still like poverty. Something happened when Papa went for evangelism on Saturday. Met one old woman. And you could see in his eyes that he wants to bring this woman out of this thing. Was telling the woman. The woman was saying, no, you cannot bless me. Chai! The, the children around her were saying, today go rich house. Today, today go rich house. God will punish you. Today go rich house. Today go rich house. Today go rich house. The woman that I said, I humorously told myself that day that the person who cost her well, cost her with smelling mouth. The person didn't brush mouth. The person cost her well that even when goodness was coming to her, Face to face, a pastor by. The person didn't wash his mouth in the morning, didn't brush. He cost her well. And the cost click. God forbid. A woman met me one day in church. He says, Sir, you see this, my son? I don't understand who he is, so. I don't understand who he is, so. I don't know that I will buy this boy short bread. He will be pointing cabin. You don't know the meaning. The distance between shortbread biscuit and cabin is very far. <laughs> that the boy will, will buy him shortbread to eat. He will say, no, he's not eating this way. We point cabin. <laughs> she will buy him chocolate. He will point in tonton sweet. He said, he said, this boy, you have poverty mentality. You have poverty mentality. If you want to know all your children, gather all of them together. Don't assume oh, some children have poverty mentality. Oh. If you like, have all the money in this world. Some children still have poverty mentality. Gather all your children. Tell them that, oh yeah, carry cup, keep, keep glass cup, like four glass cup, and keep in between the glass cup, keep like 20 plastic cup. Tell them, go to the kitchen and bring me cup. Anyone that the child brings is his mentality. <laughs> if that child brings plastic cup, <laughs> no problem. You have not seen people that like everything about their life is fairly used. Even if they see salvation, they would have looked for fairly used salvation. They, everything about their life is fairly used. Fairly used. On this, fairly used. Everything, fairly, car, fairly used. As fairly, everything is fairly used. Fairly used. Fairly, if it's not fairly used, they will buy a motto that about 18 persons have used. That kind of motto, that kind of, that kind of car, that one has entered from car to vehicle. So, if you see it, when they bring it, you will see it. One door is Mazda, the other door is Pujo. The boot, the boot is Mercedes-Benz. The back is another car. That one, Japanese hand has gone off. What is inside it? It's on each hand or a koku hand. When they are coming, you will know. They will start the car. You will, what you will be hearing? Instead of the car starting, what you will be hearing? Laughing car. God forbid for you in Jesus' name. 
Change your mind, though. There is some, some people used to say, me, I like big things. I say, that's what I've I suffered before now. I would like big things. They say, that they say like, it will like better things. Who will like bad? You, don't, you, are, you must be in your right mind to like nonsense. Like good thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like good thing. Mama shared one testimony one day that she, she dreamt of Lufthansa and she entered it. That one is good dream. Mother, you will see yourself every time in the dream, riding bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. <laughs> Evil spirit worry you, ride bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. When will your bicycle finish? When will your bicycle finish? Can't you also sit down and dream something that is nice that you will be, I don't understand you. <laughs> You'll be using okbo to cook soup. You know what they call okbo? You won't know it. Okbo? My mother used to use it. The process was long. Long. It is one black thing like this. Before they will break it with a pistol. Bye! Then they will now remove it. They will now boil it first. Remove the back. And God help you use it to cook soup. And you warm that soup three times. It will be black like pancane oil. <laughs> Poverty. There is nothing in this world that will make me like it. Not possible. Never. Never. Some people even have poverty to the point that when even they have the money, they still, they still behave like poor people. Even when God has blessed them not to become rich, they still behave like poor people. They will buy suit that looks like Bako Super Sack. They will know, you will see them wearing suit, you will be wondering, say, this, but this man has money. The poverty mentality has affected his mind. That no matter how you do, it's still affecting him. You try to bring him out for where? I've seen people, they felt, see, the whole, a group of people came together and said they want to transform the life of a man. And they picked a man and it was an old tramp, what they call beggar, in this part of the world. They picked the man, and then the man had locks all over. They took him to the saloon, shaved all his locks, and then gave him steam bath, because for years he has not taken his bath. Now, after they are through, they went to the boutique, bought him Italian shoes, Italian clothes, Italian everything, wore him, and then brought him to where they were doing their convention, and said that he should stand by the door and become a greeter to people as they are coming in the grease them, they enter like that, like that. Then after that day, the owner of the hotel where they were doing the convention now decided to employ the man. Life story, I'm telling you, tried to employ the man and say, please, I want you to be doing this job for me. As people are like, entering, you'll be greeting. So he told him to report, this was on Friday, he told him to report on Monday. By Monday, he waited for this man, he was nowhere to be found. Waited for him on Tuesday, he was nowhere to be found. On Wednesday, he was nowhere to be found. So he started asking the people who came to do the program, where is this man? They searched for him everywhere, they didn't see him. One of them said, oh, I have an idea. Let us go back to where we picked him from. <laughs> they went there, they saw a plate in front of him, still sitting down there to beg. They've changed his outer look, but they have not changed his inner look. So he still went back to where he came from. That's how many of us are. We are born again, oh, we still wear good clothes, but our mind is not transformed. So it takes us back to where originally we were. No matter how we do, we still see ourselves tilting towards poverty. No matter how we do, tilting towards suffering. 